start off, I'm going to be machining a blank out of the forged carbon fiber. And one thing that's great about forged carbon fiber is because it's so blended and the way the strands of the carbon fiber are swirled in there, there's no like layers to it. And it's a little tricky to explain kind of what I mean here, but if you think of regular carbon fiber and the way that it's made, it's just a bunch of sheets of carbon fiber stacked up together. And so what you end up having is just a layer of resin in between each layer that makes a weak spot in the carbon fiber. So if you try to machine it, if you're not very careful, you can have it split along those layers. And so what forged carbon fiber does by having all of the material blended in there, there's no large weak areas like that standard stacked carbon fiber would have. So in practice, this means that forged carbon fiber is a lot easier to machine without having to worry about it splitting or chipping, anything like that. So now that I've got a basic ring blank shape cut out, we're going to carve a groove into the center of it, and it needs to be just wide enough for our NFC chip to fit in there. Now that I have the groove carved, I'm ready to place the NFC chip in there and glue it in place. Now I had a bit of an issue with the CA adhesive running and causing it to get all over the ring where I just wanted it to be over the chip itself, but that wasn't too big of a problem. I just used this razor blade here and carefully chipped it away, and that way we can have room to add all of the circuit board components that I wanted to add. Now it's time to start placing in some of these circuit board components. And to be clear, these aren't actually functional. It's not going to change anything to the ring. It's not gonna improve the range, anything like that. It's just for show. And I think they really do add to the overall appearance of the ring. They make it look just a little bit more techy, cyborgy, whatever you wanna call it. And my strategy here was to make an arrangement of the chips that looked interesting and cool, but one that didn't look like it wasn't just for show. So I wanted it to still look like it was functional. I wanted there to be at least some sort of organization to it. And so that was the strategy behind the placement of them. I wanted to have them placed evenly, consistently, and I was doing this by hand, so it was a little bit tricky. So I was just as careful as I could to get the placement how I wanted. And then I just wanted them to be really organized. So I did everything in a grid pattern and make sure everything was aligned properly. Now I've got all of those circuit board components in place and I wanted to add glow powder to fill in all of the areas around them. And this was a little bit tricky. I didn't want to cover up any of the chips and to have any of the dust showing on top of the chips. And so I was really careful to just place it in the cracks and then I used a combination of my finger, a damp paper towel, as well as my pair of tweezers here, just to dust any of the glow powder off where I didn't want it. Now I have everything in place except for the tritium vials, and you'll see how I add those in a second. But for now, I'm just adding a bunch of CA adhesive over all of our components. That's going to set it all in place permanently and going to provide a clear and protective layer above everything. Now what you see me doing is carving out a channel for two tritium vials and I'm going to have one on each side of our NFC reader. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I wanna be able to put away the glow powder and not have any chance of getting dust in there. The overall look of the ring won't look as clean if there's just dust particles of that glow powder just floating around randomly in our CA adhesive. So this was all done in an attempt to preserve the clean look of the ring.
Now I'm placing the tritium vials using the exact same method I used before on those circuit board components. I'm just putting it in place, gluing it where I want it, and then filling the rest up with the CA adhesive that'll give it a clear and protective covering. That way we won't have any issues with these shattering. Now all I have left to do is sand everything flush and polish it up. And so you'll see me sand it all smooth and then I'll just go through all the different grits of sandpaper and get rid of any of the scratches that are in there. And then I will of course polish it. That'll make sure the carbon fiber is smooth, shiny, and comfortable. And then that the resin itself is crystal clear. That way we can see down through it and see all the interesting details that this ring has. And as a finishing touch, I wanted to add bevels to the ring. And this is a challenge with carbon fiber because it's such a soft material. If I were to use my lathe bit to do this, it would leave a nice bevel and it would be even, but the edges of it would be rough. And so I'd have to use sandpaper to get rid of that. And long story short, basically that would round out those bevels and not make them look as good. And so you wanna do as few of steps as possible. So I'm basically going to be skipping straight to a really high grit sandpaper, and I'm going to be using the Dremel to put those bevels into place. And so I'm holding it as carefully as I can at a 45 degree angle and I'm carefully just adding those bevels to it. And because the sandpaper is so smooth, it leaves us with an acceptable surface finish that all I need to do now is use a buffing wheel at the end and that will polish it up and that way we won't have any of those sanding marks left in it and we'll still have those nice crisp bevels that we were going for. Now I need to size up the ring and make it an appropriate thickness. And so I'm using a rough Dremel wheel to do that. And this is creating a ton of carbon fiber dust and that can be very damaging to your respiratory system because carbon never breaks down in your body. And so I was very careful to make sure that I was wearing a respiratory mask for this. That way I didn't inhale any of those carbon fibers. And if you're doing this at home, make sure you always are wearing a mask. Now that I've got it to size, I'm using sandpaper to smooth it all out. I'm making it look good as well as making it fit comfortably. Now all that's left to do is polish up the ring. So to do that on the inside, I'm using a bit of compound on this paper towel that makes it nice, smooth, and shiny. And then I'll be switching over to my buffing wheel here, and I'll use that to polish up the outside of the ring. So the ring is now finished, but the best parts of this video are still yet to come. We still need to show off the glow in the dark capabilities of this ring, as well as the NFC capabilities of the ring. So you'll see this is it glowing in the dark now. We've got those tritium vials flanking our NFC chip in the middle, and then we've got our glow powder surrounding the rest of it. And this is kind of an arctic white glow powder. The way it works is it's a little bit bluish to start out with, and then over time it fades to be a more pure white. And that's what you see here. It's more of a pure white color that it gives off and it just looks amazing nestled in there with all these circuit board components and then of course the tritium vials those are so amazing they glow no matter what you don't need to charge it with a uv source like the glow powder needs and so it just glows constantly and so these are always interesting anytime you walk into a darker room this ring immediately lights up and you're able to see it and it's just such an interesting thing to wear but now brace yourself, because if you thought this ring was cool before seeing the way the NFC worked on it, it'll blow you away once you see the capabilities that this little ring has. So enjoy these next two minutes where I will proceed to assault your ear canals with my terrible interpretation of how a real life scenario would go if you were actually to use some of the capabilities that this ring has. Wow, my screen brightness is really low. Let me just turn it up real quick. Oh man, it was so good to catch up to you after all these years. Oh, you too, Gerald. It really has been too long. I'd ask you for your new phone number, but my phone screen is being recorded and put onto one of your YouTube videos, so I don't want to give away any of your personal information. Oh, no worries, my man. I've got this ring here that's loaded with all of my incorrect contact information. Oh, great. Now I have your fake contact information. That was super useful. Brother, that has got to be one of the coolest looking rings I've ever seen. I just, man, I wish there was a way you could just punch my phone and I could see more rings just like it. Your wish is literally my command. Hey, it was uh, cool to see your house and all, but I've got memes to look at. Could I have your Wi-Fi password? Hey, I'll do you one better. I'll just tap my ring to your phone. It'll get you connected to my Wi-Fi. That way you can get looking at those memes just a little bit faster. 
Wow, no kidding. So if you made it to this point without unsubscribing, I thank you for making it through that. I hope you enjoyed the capabilities of the ring, and I hope you enjoyed this project overall. If you liked the video, you can give it a like. I've also got a link to all my social media, my website, everything like that down below. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.